In this video I'm going to show you how to have the following effect with your controllers. The ability to open and close your hands and also pick things up. When you do, the hand disappears so you can focus on the object that you've picked up. We're back in our previous project uh, where I had set up a very quickly put together VR rig uh, in Unity 2021. In this version all we had were left and hand, right hand controllers with the little uh, Sith lasers sticking out of them. So if we select our left hand controller and scroll all the way back down, you see that we have XR ray indicator. Uh, that's what is currently uh, along with the, of course, the visuals and the line render, what's creating these uh, red lines. Now, in that case, we just wanted something that would be set up quickly to do uh, some very basic uh, VR rig. Uh, and what we were using was something that was able to pick up objects at a distance. In our case, what we're going to want to do is set it up so that when the hand moves down, we have to actually get it close to the object that we want to interact with to interact with it. So first things first, what we're going to do is remove the XR ray integrator component and all the things that are attributed with that. So let's remove that as well. Remove that. We're going to go add component right in XR and we're going to select the uh, XR direct interactor as such. In this, we're not going to choose uh, change too many things, but we are going to select action trigger, just put that to state change for later. And we want in, well, at least in my case, I'm going to want the hands to actually disappear when you pick something up. Um, it's a little counterintuitive, but having the hand still present and having to mess around with it so that the object that you pick up fits in the hands just comes off weirdly in VR, at least I find so. So it's good to just have this selected hide controller on select. Just hide this when we pick something up. The next thing we're going to want to do, because right now we don't have the red lines anymore and we don't have a hand, uh, we'll do that later, uh, is put something in place so that uh, we actually have a hand visual. So I'm going to select this, go down to 3D object, uh, select a sphere, sure, sphere. Uh, we are going to remove this sphere collider because we don't want the hand actually colliding with objects that we're picking up. And we're going to uh, put it at 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 in size, just so that they're not too big, these spheres. There we go. Let's go back to a left hand controller. And we're going to put in the model uh, the sphere that we just created. Here we go. The next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that the XR Direct Interactor actually understands what it's interacting with in the world. And to do that is we're going to create a collider, sphere collider once more, uh, just, and it's quite large. So let's put the radius down to 0.1. Uh, that will be just about a little bit bigger than the hand in our case. We're going to want to make sure that the uh, collider is set to is trigger as such. And we'll do the exact same thing on the other hand. So right hand controller, uh, we want to remove the indicator, remove the line visualizer, remove and the line renderer, remove, add XR, make sure that the uh, direct interactor is what you select. Set this to change state, set this to uh, true as such, and add in the collider over here, point one, and just copy and paste this child on the right hand. Make sure the model is set to our new sphere that is on the right hand. And now we're going to take a look in play mode. And here we are once again in play mode in our XR rig. So as you can see now, the two hands that I created for myself are present. We can see them, we can move them around. And I will try not to trip on any of my cables. Come down to this cube and we are now able to pick it up. Here we go. Woo this up and 
Aha. So you see, on my left hand, I forgot to put it as a trigger, and um, it isn't actually working. In fact, if I drop it on it, it seems to be bouncing off the collider. So I'm going to have to change that if I want it to work properly, but this is actually a pretty good representation of why you want it as a trigger. However, on the right hand, which we did correctly, I am now able to pick it up, the hand disappears underneath the cube, uh, and uh, yeah, we have the first part completed. All right, now back in Unity, we're gonna go over to the right hand controller and uh, make sure that it is indeed triggered. You see it wasn't, let's just do that. I'm going to do a few other things just so that it's more visually easy to see in 3D because uh, I found that it was quite difficult. So let's just make a material, call it gray. Here we go. Make the color grayish as such. Put this to that, here we go. And we're just gonna drag that onto the box and onto the thing that we're interacting with. I think that'll help a little bit. Uh, next thing that we're going to want to do is apply the hands uh, models to our actual hands. And the last part we created uh, spheres to do this, uh, but in this one we are going to use hands. Uh, now I'm going to be using what is called left hand here. This is a hand that was given in the SDK for Oculus, I believe. Uh, it has since been uh, changed uh, from a Maya object to an FBX object, and I will add it to a link to it in the description. Um, but this is what we're going to be using in this tutorial. It, it, the same idea works for pretty much anything, uh, but let's just set it up quickly. So, first things first, remove the spheres that we created for the hands, and we are going to drag drop the left hand onto the left hand controller. Just make sure that it is zeroed out. It is. There we go. And we are going to copy it and add it to the right hand controller. And we are going to paste this child. Now, if I was to play this right now, you'd have two left hands, which is not what you want. However, if I go to scale and put this to minus one, as such, uh, you see that the left hand is now on the right. And this is pretty useful considering that if I hold down Alt and click on the arrow here, you can see that these hands actually are rigged and have bones and stuff inside of them so that we are able to make them move uh, later on. And just close this up now. Here we go. So we don't have to start over on each hand uh, to uh, make sure that they're, you know, separately being animated and such. It, they're going to use the same animation controller and we can use the exact same hand and all we needed to do is make the scale minus one over here. I'm going to rename this to right hand just so that uh, we have a little bit of a visual representation of which hand is which over in the hierarchy. And we are going to add in a animator such uh, to both of them. So animator, animator, there we go. Uh, this is personal preference, but I'm also going to rotate these from the center. Here we go. And just move this to 90 for the left hand and uh, minus 90 for the right hand. Oh, oh, that's not correct. 90? There we go. Yeah, minus 90. Okay, and make sure that everything is set up at zero, zero, zero for each hand in its position as such. There we go. And we are going to now create a animation, animator controller, I'm sorry, for our hands. So, uh, actually, if I select it, click on animation and just create, it should create one for it. So let's do that hand underscore idle, open, call it open. There we go. Aha. So not only did it create uh, the animation, hand open, but it also created the uh, animator controller for us here called left hand in our case. So I created open. I'm also going to create uh, hand underscore closed. And both should be applied to the controller itself. So I'm just going to rename that real quick, hand, and go to animator. If you don't have the animator tab uh, already open, you can go over to window, 
and down to animation and animator right there. The base of the controller seems to want to use triggers from going to hand open and hand closed, uh, but I found that it's actually quite nice to use blends, blend trees uh, for this. So what we're going to do is remove these two, right click, create state from new blend tree, and just call this hand tree for now. And we'll enter hand tree as such. And you see that it has used uh, a, it has created a parameter here called blend. We're going to call this grip. And the blend tree goes from zero to one as such. What we're going to do is select blend tree. We're going to go up here, motion, add a motion, add another motion. And we're going to have open as our first and close as our second. So when it goes from zero, the float value zero to one, it's going to go between open and closed. Let's go back to our scene. We're going to select the floor and hide it uh, just for now and select our uh, left hand. Now the open animation is already created for us. Uh, it is the default state, so we'll leave that like that for now. Go over to closed. Click on uh, the record button. And we are going to alt, click on arrow to open all this up. Grab the index finger and just move it slightly. And as you see, while we're moving the index finger and the uh, record button is selected, it is creating a keyframe. Oops. Let's get a little closer. If you don't have any understanding of what how animation works, keyframes are essentially the way that the 3D model is being told, uh, this is the position that I want you at this frame in the animation. In our case, we're not going to create a big animation. Uh, you can if you want to. Uh, in our case, we're just going to move the hand's fingers over as such. And give it a look as if the hand is closed. There we go. That'll do for now for our case. Uh, ooh, no, it will not. <laughs> All right, let's fix this up a little bit. There we go. Uh, ring finger. Here we go. And no, pinky. There we go. Yeah, you definitely want to set this up uh, so that you're turning not centered but on pivot and as local otherwise you create this monstrosity uh, let me just quickly fix this up All right, now that we have the uh, hands two states, we have closed and we have opened. There we go. Uh, we're going to check out the blend tree animator. Select the blend tree and just go from zero to one. And as you can see in the display down here, it goes from a closed state to an open state, depending on the current grip value. And it doesn't do it uh, one to another. It's very uh, a linear progression from one to another. So we'll have a little bit of control over it. 
The next thing we're going to do is create a script uh, so that when you actually interact with the controllers in your hands, it's going to uh, change that to information for the animator to react to. So let's select our left hand and we're going to create a uh, C sharp script, call it hand. And we're going to apply the hand script onto our first hand as such. We're going to then enter the script itself. And we're now going to create uh, a few variables to be able to have the uh, hands controller uh, explain what's happening to our animator. So first things first is we are going to add a few variables. Just add a serialized field here, private action based controller it's going to give us an error that is fine show potential fixes and select using unity engine xr interaction toolkit there we go and we'll add in m controller equals null we're then going to add two more of these serialized fields so copy paste paste the second one is going to be the animator and just call that M animator. The second one is going to be a speed value. So float and call this speed. To be able to have a little bit of control over the speed where the hand is opening and closing. And make that 0.0F. Here we go. The next thing we're going to do, if you remember in the animator, we created a parameter called grip. We're just going to make sure that we know exactly what that parameter is called at any time. So private const string and call this animator underscore grip underscore param equals grip as we called the parameter over in our uh, animator. And now we'll create two more variables. So private float m underscore grip target equals 0, 0.0 f private float m underscore cur grip equals 0, 0, 0.0 f as such. We're not going to need start in our case because we are assigning the variables in the inspector with the use of serialized field. And in the update, what we're going to do is we're first going to uh, set our desired grip value. So M underscore grip target equals M underscore controller dot select action dot action dot read value as a float value as such. So when the controller is going through its select action, which is the grip button on the controller, it is going to update the what we want as the target grip. The next thing we're going to do is add an if statement if the current grip does not equal our target grip, we're going to make our current grip equal math f dot move towards current grip. target grip time dot delta time times our speed as such. That means that when we uh, when we're either pressing down on the grip button on the controller or letting go of it, it's going to update the target. 
the current grip is going to slowly move towards the target. So this is what we want to change towards this target. And we're going to use time.delta time, so the time in real world times uh, the speed that we give it to know how quickly it's going to go between those two phases. Uh, our current speed is at zero. I'm actually going to put that to eight because I happen to know that that works quite well as a number. Uh, but over this amount of time, it's the grip is going to go from zero to one or one to zero. Uh, the moments that we either touch the grip controller or let go of it. What, now what we're going to want to do is make sure that the animator knows that this is happening because this is what the script is actually for. So set float of the animator and we are going to uh, no we're going to use the uh, parameter that we're we created so animator param grip we're setting that variable to be the current grip as such so the idea once again once you touch the grip it's going to update the target and as long as the current grip is not the target it's going to go through this the current grip is going to update itself based off of if you're holding down the trigger or not, or not the trigger, the grip controller or not, with the speed that we give it. And then the animator is going to visually update itself based off of the current grip as such. Okay, now let's go back to our scene over here. We have a few things to set up. First off, the speed, I said that eight works quite well. We're going to take the animator for the hand, assign it here. We're going to take the controller of that hand, assign it here. And we'll do the same thing for the right hand. So select the right hand, select the hand component that we created, put the animator to the animator, put the controller of the right hand to the controller of the right hand. And we're going to bring the floor back. Such. And now if we play, Now we're in play mode, and as you can see, we have two hands. If I hold down the grip button for the hands, the hands opens and closes. And if I grab my object, I can now pick it up and drop it. And it's no longer using the ray cast that we had before. If I just point towards it, it doesn't work. It really does use the controller at a collider rather, so you pick it up. Now there's one thing that I'm noticing right now. And that is the fact that the hands do not disappear. So that's because I probably forgot something about it. So let's fix that right now. Going back to Unity, uh, I've scrolled down here and noticed that the model is not currently set. And that's a problem. So we're going to do that now. Left hand to this model. Right hand to this model. And now it should be able to use the hide controller on select. I believe the reason it wasn't was that I did not have the model set up. And now back in VR, hands are still there. They're still working. If I hold down the grab controllers, I'm able to close and open my hands. And if I go over to my cube and try to interact with it, as you can see, the hand disappears. And I can even pass it from one hand to another or try to juggle with it. poorly. And there we go, that's how you have hand controllers in VR that allow you to be able to pick up stuff and disappear when you pick up the objects that you want, just like in the start of the video.